What uh, would this offer or do to health care debate? Well, since we already have almost half of Congress as lawyers, I think adding some new professions, uh, doctors would be great. Gee, if it were a couple of CPAs, that would be even better because you know we, I, I've heard rumors we have a federal budget deficit or <laughs> debt. Uh, no, but this would be very helpful because Obamacare is going to kick in over the next two or three years, fully implemented in 2014. I th think we need doctors to balance not only the fiscal uh, fixes we're going to have to do to Obamacare, but also to make sure that patients are taken care of, that we have more consumer choice in health care. And doctors, I think, um, have a great trust factor. And if they're the ones making the laws, I think people are going to be more comfortable with the changes. We can't accept Obamacare as is, but we're going to ha obviously have to reform our medical system. Absolutely. Well, since, uh, let's talk about one of those doctors running against John Dingell. What's your uh, take on this particular race from the outside looking in? It's very close because John Dingell is not used to tight races. Uh, he's over 80 years old. Uh, the seat has almost been a, a family-owned seat. Uh, literally, a member of the Dingle family has had it since 1932, uh, which was the last time we had a really bad economic time. And sure enough, John Dingle has been responsible in part for this bad economic time because he's voted for all of the spending and all of the taxes that have put us deeper in the hole here. Um, I think Dingle is probably going to pull it out uh, simply because um, his opponent doesn't have very much money. But it will be a very short-lived, I think, political survival uh, for him because Michigan, as you know, loses one congressional seat. And I think John Dingell is going to be the one who's going to have that little eraser on the pencil come over his district and wipe it out. Talking about people who have held seat for a long time, and an older uh, gentleman, Dale Kildee, in uh, Michigan's 5th District. That is, uh, you were telling me, kind of interesting. There's no polling right. in the district. Voters are very angry. Uh, Michigan, as you know, has straight ticket voting. So some people are going to go into the polling booth and vote for the first time all Republicans simply because they're mad at the Democrats who are in power. Uh, Kildee hasn't had a tough race. On the other hand, he hasn't mounted a tough campaign on his own behalf for a long time. That district has no polling in it. So a very angry electorate could assert itself there. Okay, let's talk about in general. Um, a lot of people think that what happened in 1994, Republicans kind of swept in on this wave of voter anger, like you said, but a lot of people also feel that uh, the Republicans sort of capitulated a couple years later and everything just came to a screeching halt as far as Republican or conservative movement. If perchance a similar thing happens in uh, this year, do you see a similar thing happening or what can we do to make well, sure that doesn't? You're right that the Republicans gradually lost steam after the contract of America was passed. Um, the joke is that they came to Washington determined to drain the swamp and they decided it made a wonderful hot tub instead. So there's always that danger of backsliding, but they're well aware that they were fired by the voters in 2006. They're also aware that the speed of politics and media has stepped up. It took the Democrats 40 years to so discredit themselves from the 1930s to the 1990s to finally get tossed out of office. Uh, it took them 40 years. It took the Republicans only 12 years took the Democrats this time only four years. Notice how sh much shorter the time span is going. I predict that the Republicans don't follow through most of their promises. If they don't do what they say they're going to do, uh, this time it'll be four months before the voters turn on them and they might get thrown out of office in 2012 again if, if voters decide, you know, we didn't, like, we didn't like the change Obama brought, we didn't like the change we used to counteract Obama, now we're going to try a new change. And that brings me to the next topic I wanted to bring up, and that is the role of the new media in the election. Well, that's what we're discussing here for the Mackinac Center tonight. I think the new media has changed the political landscape completely. You know, there's an old saying about war that it's too important to be left to the generals. Well, I think a lot of the American people have decided that the media is now too important to be left to the gatekeepers. We no longer trust people to filter our news to decide what's a story and what's not a story. That's, for example, uh, what Capital Confidential and other things that the Mackinac Center is doing. They are bringing fresh stories that used to be choked off by the uh, news media, by, that were spiked. They weren't interesting or they were too challenging to the power brokers. Now, people on the left are doing that as well, and that's fine. We need a diversity of sources. We need all of these stories out, and with the internet and with digital television, 
uh, everybody can have a platform, everybody can have a point of view, and the consumer, the reader, the viewer is going to have more power than anyone could imagine. And that's good for democracy, it's good for politics. Okay, and is it, um, could it be, uh, how do I want to say this, not hindering the political process, but let's say, um, as you said, I mean, four months later, if the electorate's not satisfied, I mean, will that Well, there's a danger. Okay. We could paralyze the political process. Nothing gets done. But I think that that forces us to think outside the box. You know, we have a governmental structure that was set up 200 years ago. Uh, I think we're going to preserve that, but maybe we need to add a few things. For example, uh, Michigan, really important things have often gone to voter initiative or referendum. Uh, I think more use is going to be made of that if the legislature or the, uh, the local officials don't respond. Um, maybe there will be more participatory democracy. Uh, maybe members of Congress will finally realize they have to have constant town hall meetings, constant uh, educational process. In other words, it used to be that members of Congress got elected and they would start running for office again or immediately. Maybe they have to get elected and they have to start educating and interacting and communicating and learning from their constituents for the whole two-year period rather than just come to them every two years and say, I want your vote now. So maybe we need a much broader, more participatory politics, and maybe all of these currents are forcing us into that. Okay. Well, very quickly, going back to um, what's going on with Congress, if perchance uh, there is a GOP majority in Congress, I mean, it will likely be very narrow. Will anything get done? Well, what the American people want is to say, stop first. Uh, there's a lot that's happened the last two years they didn't like or they thought was rammed down their throats without proper yeah. consultation. So they're just saying stop. That will be progress for many people. Going beyond that, I think we're setting up what the 2012 election is going to look like. Now Barack Obama is a choice. There are two models that he can follow after the Republicans make major gains in Congress. In 1978, Jimmy Carter, a previous Democratic president, said, well, I just had a bad midterm election. I'm just going to keep doing what I'm doing. That didn't work out so well for him. Uh, Bill Clinton, on the other hand, ever flexible, uh, a man of, shall we say, no particular deep principles, but a survival instinct, he moved to the center. He hired Dick Morris, the most amoral political consultant in America. Um, he went and moved to the right. He eventually signed welfare reform. He signed a capital gains tax. He worked with the Republican Congress. And you'll remember the stock market boomed. That kind of bipartisanship was good for the country, good for the economy. So Barack Obama has two models he can look at. He can work with the Republicans, whether they control Congress or not, but they're certainly going to be a lot stronger, or he can ignore them. If he ignores them, well, we all know what happened to Jimmy Carter. If he cooperates with them, well, Bill Clinton did survive and get a second term. Okay, good point. And I want to talk uh, very quickly. We have a lot of people wondering about the uh, race for governor in Michigan, and um, a lot of people are wondering um, what the prospects are if Rick Snyder should happen to win. Uh, he's vi leading very highly in the polls. Um, uh, what are the chances we could um, get a Chris Christie out of him? Anything is possible because he has no public record. Um, Fifty years ago, uh, Michigan took a chance on a businessman who really didn't have a public record. That was George Romney. Those are different times. Uh, these are different times. But apparently in a time of crisis, we're once again turning to a businessman to try to settle our affairs. Uh, I think that Mr. Snyder wants to make government more efficient. I think he's got all kinds of ways to bring business practices to government. But the times demand more than that. As Chris Christie has shown in New Jersey, you're going to have to take bold action. Uh, whether or not he has a legislature he can work with is going to be one issue. Will the Republicans take both houses of the state legislature? But he has got to move quickly because he's going to have to both learn how to do the job uh, because it's different from running a gateway and he's also going to have to use that narrow window of time where he can get maximum public attention and support and force through the changes that he wants. Now, I don't think he's been particularly forthcoming with what kind of changes he wants, but uh, neither was Chris Christie, and Chris Christie turned out to be a pleasant surprise. Let's hope the same thing happens here in Michigan with Snyder. No, I, just to be fair, in case Bernero wins. Um, Who? <laughs> Verge. Well, I've, I've debated Verge. <laughs> okay. Um, yes, you could walk through his deepest thoughts and not get your ankles wet. Um, he, uh, he, he's the um, Carl Palladino of Michigan, as far as I'm concerned, a wild man. Uh, I don't know what was in the water when the voters of Lansing elected a mayor, but something was. Uh, I think, I, I normally don't make categorical statements, Kathy, but I will make a categorical statement. Okay. Uh, Verge, you're going to be stuck with your day job. <laughs>